Welcome to Autodesk Inventor The Basics. For this project, we're going to get you started in Autodesk Inventor making blocks that have letters of your name on them. Then we'll take all these blocks and assemble them in a particular order to spell out your name. On your desktop, find the icon or shortcut for Autodesk Inventor Professional 2014. It should look like a letter I on an orangish red background. If you double click that, it will take about 30 to 45 seconds to open. Uh, it loads up all the plugins that are associated with the program and then it'll start with a splash or welcome screen like you see right here. What's nice is that it does list all your recent files so you can go back quickly if you're working on a project and get back in there and then it gives you the option to begin a new project or open an existing project that you've been working on. Okay. Right now I'm going to close this so that we can see the other screen in the background. Usually when you start Autodesk Inventor, you see that there's the giant letter I up in the corner and then there's a new button. If we want to get started, we always go up here and let's click on something new. There's three kinds of things we can do in Autodesk. The first two on the top are making new parts. This is usually where we begin when we have a new project. In the middle, we'll find some assembly windows when we've made a number of parts and want to put them together, we'll choose assembly. The bottom are drawings or ways that we can present our projects once we've actually put them together. Okay, Let's start at the top and click on the standard IPT and then click create. It may take a few seconds as it loads some of the background programs and all the features that we want to use. But eventually we should notice that this ribbon of tools across the top changes, screen changes, and also this column over here that we call the browser is going to list all the things that we've done in our parts. So this is a standard IPT. Whenever I begin, I want to start again in the upper left hand corner and make a sketch. If I click 2D sketch, I have this wonderful shape that comes into the middle of my screen and it asks, how do you want to draw this? I could draw it in this window, I could draw it in a different window, or if I click the last one it's like I'm drawing something from above. It doesn't particularly matter which window you select, but I always try to pick the same one. This is the one I'm used to picking. Okay. Once I click on that I do notice that the tools change, and now I have some drawing tools that I can use. You'll notice the word drawing is right here. Okay. Since I want to make a cube that is one inch by one inch by one inch, I'm going to click on the rectangle and I get to start drawing. When I move my cursor to the main part of the screen, this is my drawing or workspace, I notice that wherever the cursor is there's a yellow dot. Whenever I click my mouse button once, that's going to anchor the corner of a box. I can now move my mouse around and create whatever shape I want. I do notice that there's two boxes that change with measurements as I move my cursor around. So I want to begin by typing in the correct values for each of these numbers. My box is going to be one inch by one inch. So I go to my keyboard, find the letter one, hit tab, and then one again. This gives me a one inch by one inch square. I have to press enter for those changes to take effect. And now on my screen I can see that it does say one inch by one inch. If I'm done drawing, and I am, I'm going to go to the upper right hand corner. There's a large green check mark that says finish sketch. I think it's easy to remember in this program that we seem to always begin in the upper left hand corner and we're, when we're done doing something we go to the upper right hand corner. So let's click finish sketch. This gives us a more three dimensional view of our square and we can now make it three dimensional. If I want to zoom out a little bit or center whatever I've done I can find this navigation cube and a little house, which is a home view. If I click on that house, it zooms it out so that I can see the whole box that I've sketched. Now to make it three-dimensional, I go to the button that says extrude, and when I click on that, it does take my shape that I've drawn and make it three-dimensional. gives it an extra width. It automatically is set at one inch, which is exactly what I want, so I press OK. 
I now have a cube that is one inch by one inch by one inch. I go back to that navigation cube, click on the home button, and I have a beautiful gray cube. If you want to give it a little bit of color, go all the way to the top, there's a drop down menu called default. And you'll see that you can give it some color. Let's take this and make it blue. Beautiful. You've just made your first part using Autodesk Inventor.